For this presentation, we're going to be covering the topic of grazing annual forages. And within this, we'll touch on such things as the different cool and warm season forages that might be used, uh, the carrying capacity and stocking rates for these, as well as different grazing strategies that could be used. Well, the annual forages are generally classified into the two main groups of cool season and warm season. On the cool season side on the left, uh, we have things such as oats, spring triticale, spring barley, field peas, several other legumes, rye grasses, as well as the turnips, radishes, and the brassicas, or also winter wheat, rye, or winter triticale. The warm seasons, we've got uh, the millet, both grazing and hay types, the sorghum sedan grass hybrids, straightforward sorghum sedan grass, and also we've seen some use of things like crabgrass, teff, forage corn, and other potential legumes. Additionally, uh, sometimes we'll see the forage cocktails or cover crop mixtures have both cool and warm seasons within uh, the same seeded mix. Well, when grazing annual forages, there are a few important points to bring out. First is that grazing is not as efficient as haying, and by this I mean the grazing interrupts the plant growth, and that may reduce some of the potential growth of that plant. And of course, with grazing, there's always the potential for trampling losses. Now, it's also very important to start at the appropriate stage or height. In the grazing system or grazing program, simple rotations are beneficial. This certainly allows for an increase in, in the harvest efficiency. For warm season annuals, staggered plantings, and by that I mean spacing out the planting dates across two or three different fields, can be beneficial to avoid having the majority of that warm season annual growing very fast and maturing too quickly before we get to graze it. Another thing that uh, some producers have done is plant a few extra acres that could be hayed if not needed for grazing. Other things including having stocking flexibility and nearby pasture in case uh, the cattle are getting ahead of the forage as it's growing, you can move them to this adjacent backup pasture. And of course, with many of these annuals, there's always the potential of nitrates and some have the potential for prussic acid. In the spring, on the lush cool seasons, um, grass tetany um, should be thought about. Uh, having some dry hay available when it's very lush uh, is also another practice that does work. NEBGUIDE uh, G2183 does provide information or additional information on summer annual forage grasses and their management. Well, one of the points was starting at the right height or appropriate stage. And for the cool seasons, the small grains, typically we see this at the point when they are about six to eight inches tall. And here in central Nebraska, if we're looking at a late March or April 1st planting date, it takes till about the May 15th to the 25th before they reach that height. For the late summer planted um, cool season annuals, um, say an August planting grazing could start is sometime in September but oftentimes producers will allow or accumulate the growth and begin the grazing in October. For the warm season annuals we like to see them uh, at a height of about 15 to 20 inches for sedan grass or pearl millet. For the sorghum sedan grass hybrids about 18 to 24 inches in height is the um, where they should be when grazing starts. Well, simple grazing rotations were also noted as in being important. And in the case of the warm season annuals, in the example here, we have some sedan grass that was with staggered seeding. And whether a person has a single field that they subdivide it with temporary fencing or multiple fields, the plan could look something like this, where in field A, which was planted on June 1st, the grazing starts when that forage is about 15 to 20 inches tall. It's grazed for a period of seven to 10 days, and then the cattle move on to field B for another approximately seven to 10 days, and then continuing on to field C 
for seven to ten days and then moving back to field A and repeating the whole sequence and process. I mentioned the staggered planting dates. This is just a photo here uh, taken on July 8th, but it shows on the left a field planted June 7th and then on the right a field planted on May 28th, roughly a little over a week earlier. And you can see some of the difference in terms of the height and growth stage of those two. Oftentimes, it may be better to have that planting dates uh, about two weeks apart to have a really noticeable staging or staggering of the growth. Talking a little bit about the stocking rates and carrying capacity, and by definition, I'll use the terminology animal unit where we're talking about 1,000 pounds of animal. And if we consider then what an animal unit day is, an AUD, that's approximately a demand for 26 pounds of forage. On a month basis or a one animal unit month, AUM, we're talking then about 780 pounds of forage. And in terms of a cow-calf pair, using that same base unit of 1,000 pounds per animal unit, uh, estimating that a 1,500 cow pound cow-calf together would be 1.5 animal units, and a 500 pound wean calf, for example, coming in at 0.5 animal units. And in terms of assuming grazing efficiency, and remember earlier we were talking how grazing is not 100% efficient, of course, but we'll typically assume 50% of grazing efficiency. That means that we have 1.3 AUMs per ton of potential forage. The next three slides present approximate stocking rates for different um, annual forages. This first one here is specifically for early spring planted cool season annuals, which of course includes things like oats, spring criticale, barley, field peas, or mixtures. It also applies to fall planted annuals such as rye, criticale, or winter wheat that are grazed in the spring. On the column on the left, uh, we have potential hay yield listed from 1.5 to 3.5 tons per acre. And then the columns to the right of that have the carrying capacity in AUMs per acre, AUDs per acre, as well as also on a cow-calf pair basis per acre based on the length of grazing time. Using the 2.5 ton potential hay yield, which is pretty typical for many of these spring planted annuals, we would then expect about 3.21 AUMs per acre off of that um, spring seeded forage. In other words, uh, if we were going to graze that for one month, that would mean 2.14 cow calf pairs per acre. Or if we grazed it for about one and a half months or six months, six, excuse me, six weeks, which would be typical, we would be able to stock it at about 1.42 pairs per acre. And again, you have to keep in mind that this is based on a grazing, grazing efficiency of about 50%. In this table here, we have uh, stocking rates for mid to late summer planted cool season annuals. So we're talking late July, August, and in most cases here, thinking about using these for fall forage. Uh, the table is set up the same way where we have a potential hay yield of one and a half to three and a half tons per acre. And on the right, uh, we have, to the right of that, we have the different stocking rates in AUMs and AUDs per acre. And then also in the cow-calf pair per acre basis. And I've got listed two choices on that, whether we're grazing it for one month or for two months. But uh, using the two-month example, that means we would be able to support about one, little over one cow-calf pair per acre for that two-month period. And then lastly, we have uh, the same table arrangement for warm season annuals, and these would be typically early summer planted. We'll use a potential average hay yield of about four tons per acre. And then on the right, of course, you see where we have a potential grazing period of grazing period choice of one, two, or three months. If we chose our plan to graze for three months, our stocking then would be at about 0.91 pairs per acre. 
just to cover a few of the different options in terms of double cropping some of these annual forages this is a relatively simple example here shows um, one field where we could have had rye planted the previous fall that rye is grazed in april and may when that rye is uh, completely grazed out there in may the animals or cattle would move to some native or adjacent other pasture immediately after the rye was grazed uh, out the sorghum sedan grass would be planted i get june 1st as the approximate date and then that sorghum sedan would be grazed july through september in another similar example here we could have spring planted oats planted late march that's grazed during a late may and through the month of june again then the cattle at that time would have to go to native or other adjacent pasture immediately after the oats were grazed out on uh, July 1st, we have the approximate time when the sorghum sedan grass would be planted. And then for that, it would be grazed in August and September. Other combinations to get more of a continuous or uninterrupted uh, grazing. Um, we have fields, separate fields, or in this case, a divided field where on the upper left-hand corner there, we see half of a field planted to oats in late March. And then the other half in late May, sorghum and sedan grass would be planted. Well, that oat side would be grazed in mid-May to mid-July. And then the, once the um, oats were grazed out uh, at the end of June or early July, we'd have the sorghum sedan grass that the cattle could move to on the other side. Now, in the third step of the sequence there, the side that did have the oats planted on it could also be replanted in late July back to oats and something like turnips. And then that would be grazed in October and November. Now, once the sorghum sedan grass was grazed out, um, winter rye could be planted for grazing the following spring. You can see there also some additional information is provided related to the potential carrying capacity of each of those two forages. A few things on the different options as far as grazing some of these. Uh, we could also consider that with so many of the with many of the warm season annuals, uh, we can stockpile those or leave them standing uh, after frost, after they've completely froze down and graze those later in the fall and early winter months. Another option to be could be windrow grazing, where prior to um, or shortly after we have our first frost in the in, of the fall, uh, the, those forages could be windrows, windrowed and the windrows left in place for direct grazing. There is a NEB guide. It is number G1616 that goes into much further explanation about windrow grazing. On the cool season, uh, typically we can graze those down quite easily until they completely freeze down. Uh, generally, for those cool seasons, uh, it takes some pretty cold temperatures in the 10 to 15 degree neighborhood before they completely uh, stop growing for the year and turn brown and, and lay down. These two, in some cases, can be windrow gray. Uh, another example here of an option in, with related to the grazing uh, individual here is using a fence placed along his pivot and he's controlling or strip grazing uh, these oats. And here are the photo taken on October 20th. Similarly, strip grazing, or as the picture illustrates here, uh, a fence placed on the center pivot, uh, this can be used to control the windrow grazing as well. Thanks for listening. We invite you for more information on this topic to go to our extensionpubs.unl.edu website or the beef.unl.edu website. Both contain links to various resources related to this topic. On the beef website, there are also two other companion webinars. One is Growing Annual Forages, and the second is Planning Annual Forage Systems. That second webinar does go into much greater detail in terms of stocking rates, carrying capacities, and putting together sequences of annual forages for use.